The majority of succulents are incredibly easy to propagate. Those of you who have succulents may have already found accidental propagation from fallen leaves or branches. The fact that many succulents can propagate from the tiniest leaf is just mind-boggling, but there are many other ways succulents propagate and reproduce. Many quite different plants are succulents and so not all of the reproduction techniques will apply to each and every succulent. For instance, succulents in the Aeonium genus do not propagate from leaves. If you are hoping to propagate a particular succulent, it is always best to find out its botanical name and research how it reproduces using that name. In this video we will have a look at the different ways succulent plants propagate and reproduce, as well as some additional information on how to propagate succulents successfully. Succulents have developed quite a few different ways to reproduce. Some utilize them all, while others struggle with a couple. Hybrids and cultivars can be harder to propagate and many will not even produce offsets or grow from leaves. Succulent plants can propagate and reproduce by leaves, separation of offsets, cuttings or division, flower stalks, bulbil, seed, roots and tissue culture. Now let's have a closer look at each of these and some examples of what it all looks like. Many but not all succulents have the ability to grow a whole new plant from a single leaf. These succulents have very clearly developed this way to be able to reproduce and multiply as their leaves will easily dislodge from the main plant even if you don't try very hard. Reproducing from leaf is a great strategy for plants as there is minimal damage to the main plant and the leaves can roll a bit further away and have enough good growing space to establish. In the growing season, leaf reproduction can also be quite fast and some species will grow into a decent sized plant in about 6 months. While many succulents can be propagated from leaves, it can be hard to separate them in some species and cultivars in a way that will ensure growth. I have a separate video dedicated to leaf propagation and we'll tag it at the end of this video. Offsets, also known as chicks or pups, usually grow off the main stem of the mother plant. This occurrence is often referred to as henan chicken and can be seen in many Echeveria, Sempervivum, Havothia, etc. When offsets are not separated together, they will form a dense clump. Mature henan chicks are a sight to behold and absolutely stunning. But, when the stalk on them is long enough to cut through, they can be separated from the mother plant and propagated. In the growing season, it takes 2-4 to four weeks for the pups to send roots and start growing on their own. Some species and cultivars may take longer than 4 weeks. One of the most important things when propagating offsets is to do it in the growing season. This would be spring to early autumn for most succulents. There's an article on our website that looks closely at propagating offsets. Link is in the description. Many succulents can propagate and reproduce from cuttings of their branches or other parts of their body. Some are so easy that when a bit breaks off and falls to the ground, it will send roots without actually being planted. Cuttings of branches often propagate better when they're a good size and have at least a few rounds of leaves. Having said that, many will easily reproduce even from the smallest bits. Some succulents will grow a woody base or tender tops on their stalks that is easily knocked off to ensure they will have a chance to reproduce in the wild when, for instance, an animal brushes against them. As an example, this Crassula ericodes has quite a clever reproduction technique and will literally set their tops loose in spring so they can roll away easily and set up shop a bit further away. I am forever finding them growing in my gravel path next to the succulent garden. The tips are pretty rigid at the moment, but these little ones rolled for over a meter from the original plant last time the Ericodes was in reproduction mode. Also look at how many there are. A couple of years ago I planted only one small plant and now I have over 10. Ericodes is one of those succulents that are extremely hardy and easy to propagate. The only part of the succulent body that is likely to have trouble reproducing if it's simply cut off halfway through is the leaf. Leaves need to be gently pulled from the stalk and stay completely intact. There are some succulents such as this and Cotomentosa that will propagate even from broken leaves, but it is not many. 
Cuttings should be propagated during the growing season as there's a much higher chance of them establishing and growing well. Palbil is a small offset identical to the main plant that can grow on an inflorescence of succulents along with the flowers. Palbils do not grow on all succulent flower stalks but do appear on a few species. It is another form of succulent reproduction and it will ensure the little plant can fall a bit further away from its parent so it has enough space to grow. This Huothia fasciata has just sent out a flower stalk with a teeny tiny palbil. It is so small the camera has hard time focusing but you can see its little leaf. When the bulbule is big enough, its weight will force the stalk down to soil level and it will send roots. Sometimes the stalk is a bit strong and the bulbule will have to wait until it goes dry. Bulbules can be propagated just like offsets, though they often lack a stalk. It is best to cut the flower with it and plant it with the flower stalk attached. I've seen bulbil grow mostly on Hawothia gasteria or aloe species, but they can occasionally pop up on other succulents too. In the majority of cases, succulent flower stalks do not serve as means to reproduction themselves, but rather carry the flowers that can get pollinated and grow seed. However, it is possible to propagate some succulents by cutting flower stalks off and planting them like cuttings. There's a video you can watch where I look into this topic in more detail. A very small minority do grow flower stalks to reproduce as well and it works in the same way as palpil. The flower stalks get tall and heavy at the top and eventually fall to the ground where they send roots and start growing new offsets. This is quite uncommon though. Succulents reproduce sexually by pollination and producing seed. For seeds to form, pollen from the anthers or the male part of a flower must find their way onto stigma the female part, via a pollinator, usually a flying insect such as the bee. The pollination will only be successful if pollen from compatible species is exchanged. This would mostly be between plants of the exact same species, but different plants from the same genus and even different genera will also sometimes work. Some succulent species produce fairly big seeds, while others are as small as fine sand. Also, not all succulents propagate easily from seed. I will still be planting seeds and making an in-depth video, so if you'd like to see how we do it, hit the subscribe button. At the nursery, we don't grow many plants from seed, as it takes a lot of time and effort to raise succulents this way. But when we do, it is usually some pretty cool plants such as lithops, conopitum and other unusual succulents. If you're keen to propagate succulents from seed, I do have a word of warning or advice. Always buy from reputable sellers as there are many scammers out there selling fake seeds of succulents that are not even real, such as the blue string of pearls. The best way is to find a seller in your country as close to you as possible and check out their reviews on social media and make sure they are legit. Reproduction through the brood in succulents is pretty rare and in my experience only happens in a few species of Hobothia, Gasteria, Aloe and Gastrello. Under the surface, the succulents can send roots some distance from themselves and pop out a pup. If you grow any of the succulents that have the ability to reproduce this way, you may have seen offsets trying to grow through holes at the bottom of the pot. Root reproduction again ensures the plant can spread some distance and not be too crowded. Propagate offsets that grow from roots, simply pull them away and keep the root which should help the offset establish faster once potted up. But do be careful and only take offsets that are big enough and have at least a few set of leaves. If they are like this little one here, they're still too young to be separated. Tissue culture is a man-made multiplication technique that happens in vitro or in a petri dish. Succulents and other plants have small parts cut off and cloned in a cocktail of growth hormones and gels in sterile conditions. Tissue culture is a big business as it is incredibly effective. One plant can provide enough material for hundreds if not thousands of clones. 
Quite a few, if not the majority, of conventionally grown succulents and other plants come into this world as tissue culture. If you own multiple succulents, chances are at least a couple of them are tissue culture raised. The innovation of tissue culture has transformed horticulture and many producers, including myself, use it. And this is what tissue culture looks like. These little plants are completely sterile, pest and disease free. At this stage, they look nothing like their adult selves. They are tiny and very fragile. This plant here is Echeveria bluebird and the one next to it Echeveria cante. Both of these cultivars are quite difficult to propagate any other way. I'm now going to plant them in propagating trays and hopefully in a few months time they will look as good as this Graptoveria pink ruby which is now about 7 months old. If you're in a scientist thinks they would like to have a go at tissue culture at home, it certainly is possible but also incredibly hard. Tissue culture how-tos can be found on the internet and supplies are easily accessible. But if you don't have a sterile laboratory space, success is unlikely. I have a few in-depth videos and articles on different ways succulents can be propagated, so if you'd like more detailed info, check out our website and the videos at the end. The most important piece of advice I can give you when it comes to propagating succulents is to only propagate in the growing season. This may differ from succulent to succulent, though spring will work for pretty much all succulents. Most succulents can be propagated spring to summer and autumn in countries with frost-free winters. When cutting any part of succulents off to propagate, they should be left to dry out for at least 24 hours so the wound seals. This will prevent infections and fungal diseases from entering the plant. While drying the cuttings, they should be in a dry, bright but sheltered spot. They can easily burn when exposed to strong sun. Most succulents are not frost tolerant, so do not propagate when frost is still danger. The hardy succulent types can be planted in the garden, but I would recommend starting any bits of succulents in pots or propagating trays using either seed raising mix or succulent potting mix. If you're propagating in summer, make sure the plants are sheltered from strong sun in the afternoon. The root should appear between 2 to 4 weeks. Some succulents root incredibly fast while others take their time. In my opinion, cuttings should be watered once the potting mix looks dry, but they should never sit in soggy potting mix for more than a couple of days as they can rot. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Um, if you'd like to ask anything, you can drop your questions in the comments or go to our website, succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.